Okay, yep. Um, all right, Heather said yes. So I don't know what that means. I asked if she was having trouble getting in. I don't see her at all, so. All right. Um, all right, well, so, so now we break for executive session. Somebody has to make a motion. I was willing to make the motion, but I didn't know if Kimberly or Donna wanted to make um, an announcement to attendees about what was happening and that they would be leaving the meeting for a little bit. Kimberly, do you want to do yeah. that? Sure. Um, so the school board is going to be breaking off now um, to go into executive session um, and we will be returning at 6.30 for the regularly scheduled um, school board business meeting. So we are going to have to ask everybody but the school board to, um, to leave. So I'm gonna try to figure out how to do this. It looks like Lisa Melanson might be having trouble. Oh, there she goes. I think I just got her out, but I don't know if she's going to be able to come back in or not. So that could be a problem. Okay, so now I'm going to stop recording. Okay, now we're recording again. Okay, can you make that motion again? Oh, yes, I'd like to make a motion that we move into executive session. Uh, do, we have, do we have to say the whole pursuant to one MRSA yeah, yeah. subsection four or five six A for the purpose of discussing personnel items? Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> I second that motion. Okay, Heather, you have to do a roll call vote. Do you want me to do it? You're muted. Can you hear me now? No. There we go. There Why we go. Why don't you do the roll you... call? Oh. There you go. Yeah. Phil Thomas here. Yay or yes. nay? Yay. Uh, Hope Straw. Yay or nay? Yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Laura Danino. Yay. Nasser Shear. Yay. And Heather Altenberg. Yay. My apologies for being late. I had trouble. Okay. Putting back on. Yep. Okay. Donna, tell me when you've admitted everybody. <laughs> okay, we have about two more minutes, so. Um... Okay. So we have Troy, Jeff, Troy is coming in. Yeah, I see you down now. Hello, everyone. Hello. We have about one more minute, so. Here's Piper. OK. 
Good. Donna, did you get a chance to share? Does do people know about Valerie Adams had her baby? Oh no, I didn't. People not aware of that? that? No. Yeah, she had a little boy uh, yesterday morning at about two a.m. So just after Mother's Day, I think the oh, name is sweet. Oliver. Oh. I could be wrong. It could be Oscar, but I thought it was Oliver. I don't know if you know, but. Oh, that's great news. It's very cute. And I guess she's doing well. So, yeah. Hi, Kathy. Welcome. And Piper and Val and Troy. Here comes Wim. Allie's back. Got Alan. Allie. And there's Jason. Welcome, Jason. Hi. Sonia. Okay. Hopefully Lisa Melanson will be able to get back in. I know. No, did we lose Marcy? She's still with us. Can you guys see me all right? Okay. <laughs> oh, there you are, Marcy. I can find you. Okay. Yeah. I know. I have to look really hard to find everyone on little squares when someone's talking. <laughs> Elizabeth, this season, this spring, couldn't have been last spring for tennis weather, right? Uh... No. Of course not. <laughs> I think I like your I think, haircut, Elizabeth. I think, I think we're probably good, Heather. All right. Well, welcome back to the regular business meeting of May 12th, 2020. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Okay. Seeing none. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the board minutes of April 14th, 2020? I move we approve the board minutes from April uh, 20, April, April 14th, 2020. A second? Can second. I second? Thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, any discussion? Um, okay, vote. Heather Altenberg is yay. Kimberly Carr? Yay. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yay. Bill Scott here? Yay. Elizabeth Seifries? Yay. Nasser Shear? Yay. Hope Straw? Yay. And Laura Danino? Yay. Thank you. Can I have a motion for item four? I can go again, but maybe give somebody else a turn. Go for it, Laura. Okay. I move we approve the special business meeting board minutes from April 21st, 2020. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Phil. Any questions? Comments? Okay, Heather Altenberg's a yay. Kimberly Carr. Kimberly Carr? Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Nasser Shear. 
<clears throat> Nasser, did I hear you? Yay, I had to unmute. Okay, thank you. Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Thank you. Item number five, comments from student representatives. So Ali and Piper. Yes, hi. Um, so AP exams started this week and end next Friday, May 22nd. Um, and also a bunch of seniors have been collaborating to create um, special events throughout the summer for seniors, which has been really nice. And we also decided to push off our graduation ceremony um, to August and hope that the, the restrictions will lessen between its original scheduled date, which was in July um, and August. So that is an update. And I think Piper has something to add as well. Yeah. Hi. Um, so the seniors last day is next Friday. So a lot of things are really just coming to a close. Um, just finishing up some last things, especially for AP uh, classes, just uh, making sure to cram and study for those. Um, and after the seniors are done, we will hopefully be, um, each senior will do kind of like a senior project because we can't do the senior transition project. So what the idea is, is to do like a story of resilience. Um, and so pretty much it will be a video of you demonstrating either a new hobby or a new skill or a person that you've been able to connect with more, just kind of demonstrating some of the important things and good things that have come out of the social distancing and stuff like that. So I know that I'm very excited about that um, and to get stuff like that done. So yeah. It's exciting. Um, I love hearing about these new initiatives and I love the creativity coming from it. And uh, like you mentioned, Piper, the, the good things that are coming out of this social distancing, it's, it's nice to put a positive spin on it and learn something different, which is definitely cool. So thanks for that, lady. And uh, if you're taking APs, good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. Next up is comments from the public on agenda items. Um, I'd be looking on the participants to see if there's any comments, if you could raise your electronic hand. Um, and so far I'm not seeing anybody, but I wanna give you just another little bit because sometimes people are trying to find their hand. But it doesn't look like anybody is wanting to speak up. Okay, so then moving on, uh, there are no presentations. Um, we have administrative reports from the principals. I don't know which one of you wants to start. Maybe we'll start with Jason. How's that? Thank you, Jason. Okay. Sorry, my camera is a little fuzzy. Well, good evening. Great to see you. Uh, so we have at Pond Cove, we have been continuing to plug along. Um, teachers are definitely seeming to feel more comfortable uh, with the remote teaching, but it doesn't mean it's any getting any easier. Um, they're balancing, you know, their teaching and their families and other responsibilities. Um, we're especially sensitive to parents right now who are also um, some, some of who are struggling to balance the, the remote learning of, of their children and um, everything else they have going on. Uh, so we're trying to maintain an approach where um, we're trying to provide the very best we can, but also be flexible, um, knowing that um, it's very difficult for some families to engage. So we hope we're doing a great job with that. And we are um, really starting to focus on end of year activities. So classroom placement, budget orders, um, everything that we typically have to do, we still have to do those things even though we're remote. So, but I'm really proud of, of our teachers and our, our students and parents. And um, I think we're gonna make it. That's good. Um, okay. Is there any, any questions or comments about that? Thank you so much. I know it's a challenge for everyone and I really 
appreciate everything everyone's doing, parents, teachers, students alike. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Troy. Um, so thanks and welcome to my home. <laughs> it seems weird that we're all so far apart all the time lately. Um, but we are, I mean, I can echo everything Jason said. Um, I can verify to you he's telling the truth. <laughs> um, but we have, uh, it's, it's a challenge to be so far apart. I think that, you know, the, the teachers and kids have a, a good routine going where it's working um, for the most part. Um, there are some students that we know are struggling to kind of maintain or, or to keep up with it. Um, but, but largely, um, the thing that I, I think has been most surprising, I don't know that it's surprising, but I guess most eye-opening is teacher to teacher, just how much they miss that casual hallway contact um, and the conversations. And um, I think it's been amazing to realize the amount of work that gets done in the hallway sometimes because uh, now that they're just not at one door down, it's kind of hard to kind of hard to have those conversations sometimes. But um, very impressed with all everybody. The, the technology department's been wonderful. Um, there's always times, there's always a time for someone to shine. Jonathan Warner has definitely gone above and beyond. Um, he's he's making um, things that seem impossible for some of us very possible, and it's all really because of his heavy lifting and hard work. But uh, all in all. Things are going well, as Jason said, trying to navigate and figure out how to clean out 500 lockers and staying six feet apart and no more than 10 people in a building. And all of that is, is pretty overwhelming when you think about it holistically. So we're just gonna start um, planning um, and scheduling staff to come into the building and start to bag things up for students and, and making that plan. But, um, and then lastly, it's kind of energizing to when we start talking about some of the challenges for potentially reopening in the fall, and a lot of teachers have stepped up wanting to be a part of those conversations um, and apply what we've learned during this time to you know plan a b c whatever plan we're going to be working on at that point so it's it's even though it's been hard i think it's been a learning time for our teachers and they're excited to kind of share um, what they've learned so other than that things seem to be going okay thank you troy and uh, if anybody hasn't seen it, I think I sent Troy a picture. The Hope Garden in the front with all the yellow tulips just looks so beautiful. So beautiful. So that's great to have that there. Um, Jeff. Well, Heather Nasser has his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed it. Uh, go ahead, Nasser. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I just want Oh, there it is. Yeah, no problem. I just want to say to Troy that is he competing with me or am I competing with him with the, who has the most white hair? Um, <laughs> that's last a one and I got a question for him and um, I guess all the principals and maybe just just in general uh, are we identifying students that are who are falling behind as far as uh, academic goes and if we do identify them how do we help them and how do we inter interfere I know do we reach out to their parents or, or do we reach out to the students directly? I just want to know that those who are just falling a little bit behind academically, whether that's grading, whether that's reading, whether that's writing, how do we reach out to those kids? Yeah, um, Nasser, I think that's a competition I'm happy to lose. Thank you. Um, but yeah, other, other than that, um, yes, really this comes down to our teachers and their knowledge of their students and where they are and what they're at, where they're at. Um, there's no holistic test or NWEA or any of that kind of stuff to do. I think at this time, it's really the teachers, just professional judgment of knowing where the kids are at. And that's really, you know, the hope that we have as part of school closing is that teachers will be able to reconnect with some of those kids um, and focus some time with them, maybe provide some materials or um, there's many online resources and things that, that they could do over the summer. The challenge is going to be a lot of those kids have are struggling with remote learning and then the way to support them is through remote learning and that it's just going to be a challenge I think a little bit um, to do that right now so I think part of it is identifying them and knowing them and not really that identification is coming one-on-one -on -one from the individual teachers um, in their relationship with those kids thank you okay now Jeff thank you Hi, hey, good evening. Um, I guess I'll start <clears throat> and respond to Nasser's question. Um, I think I've mentioned 
to a number of groups that there are um, Nate Carpenter, the assistant principal, has been organizing, spearheading an effort to sort of keep on top of students who are struggling. Um, so um, we've at this point reviewed every student's grades um, comprehensively twice. Um, we have spreadsheets with names of students who we're aware of who are struggling. Um, our social workers, our academic skills, um, coaches, our Achievement Center coordinator and extended learning opportunity teacher are all part of a team that follows kids. In addition, obviously, to the special education staff, both the special education teachers and the ed techs are doing a great job following those kids. Um, I would say our kids both identified special ed students and non-identified who are struggling or getting more attention than they've ever gotten before in their lives and they will be happy probably <laughs> to have it disappear uh, once once the school year ends. Um, so I'd say we're very much on and we're very much on top of where students are and, and making a lot of efforts communicating with parents and communicating with students um sending emails texting people giving kids our cell phone numbers parents our cell phone numbers so we can stay on top of them um so i think we're doing everything we can in addition we have um our two main office assistants joanne moriarty and susan ray are now and and um helped by our school nurse karen jenkins are in the process of a second round of calling every family in the district just to touch base in term or in the in the high school just to touch base with families and kids to see how things are going to make sure that we're not missing students um, so i would say the vast majority of our kids are doing fine with remote learning it's definitely a challenge for some um, and we're doing our very best to um, to respond to them in any way that would be helpful um, and there's some really creative solutions out there to assist with kids as far as that goes. So I don't know if that answers your question, Nasir, but that's sort of where we are and, and what we're doing at the high school anyway. Um, so in terms of other things that are going on, um, I did send out an email. I'm losing track of time. I think it was late last week about an alternative graduation on August 5th. We're going to have a plan B, plan A. Um, uh, which is a hope, hope, hoped for plan, which is a live graduation that would be limited to immediate families. Um, and then we're looking, at, then we're doing a plan B and we're getting quite specific about a plan B, which would be if, um, if we can't have people outside of vehicles, but to have everybody together, to have a, a, a nice location in Cape Elizabeth where everybody can be in vehicles and, um, and students are very much a part of that planning planning process as well. And I think there's some good things that we can we can do to make sure that we honor our graduating seniors. Um, so we are also in the middle of creating our master schedule for next year. We're about six weeks behind uh, compared to where we nor are in a normal year at this time. Uh, but we will get it done before the end of the year. Um, I don't think um, that we will actually have uh, be in a position to actually be able to give students their schedules either in hand or electronically uh, before they leave at the beginning of the year, but it should be available relatively shortly um, after students leave and well before they come back for the beginning of the next school year. Um, in the past, we've always gotten kids um, schedules before they leave and I don't think we're going to be able to do that um, this year. Um, so our teachers continue to do a great job. Um, student engagement is really high. One of the things I was wondering about is after the April break, whether we would notice a decline in student engagement. I would say we have not. Uh, there continue to be a number of students uh, whom we're well aware of who are not as engaged as we would like to be. Uh, but overall, the student engagement after the April break, I would say it was just as high as it was before, and it was high before. Um, as Piper mentioned, today was the first day of AP exams. For those of you whose kids have not had the joy of taking AP exams in the past, they are typically two and a half to three and a half hour exams um, with rigorous security measures. There are pen and paper tests that are taken um, uh, 
with, with all kinds of security, with proctors um, roaming the room and that sort of thing. And this year, the College Board has changed them. So they are 45 minute exams. They are entirely online. Um, there are security things in place in, in that setting as well, but it's a very, very, very different experience for students. Um, and my understanding is that almost all of our students, with one or two exceptions, uh, were able to connect to their exams so they could, those who had exams scheduled today, um, were able to take them. Um, I think there was one student who had a technological glitch and so a team worked together to make sure that could be solved. Um, um, and last but not least, um, uh, Kathy Stankard and I met with Ali Gwither and um, to follow up, yeah, I think the board has heard a couple of times that our junior and senior foreign language students um, took what's called an app, app full, act full exam. Um, and don't ask me what that acronym stands for. Kathy might know, I don't remember. But anyway, it's a national exam. Um, the state of Maine a couple years ago um, endorsed the creation of a seal of biliteracy. Um, and about a third of our graduating seniors have qualified for that senior seal of biliteracy, which we're really proud of, and quite a few juniors as well. Um, I would say that's um, probably a higher percentage, perhaps, than any other school in the state, um, which we think is really cool and is a testament to the great work that um, foreign language teachers have been doing um, from elementary school all the way through high school with the support of the board. Um, so thank you for, to all of them and thank you to all of you for supporting that. Um, it's helping our kids uh, a lot. That's great, thank you so much. Sure. Are there any questions for Jeff? Okay, next up is Dell. Director of Special Education. Welcome, Dell. Thank you. Good evening. Um, in, in special education, um, every student that we serve in special ed has uh, received a distant learning plan. Their case managers have written up distant learning plans that are based on their IEPs. And uh, this also includes uh, related services, PT, OT, speech and language, and social work. Um, so those services are being delivered remotely to the extent possible. Staff have been working very, very hard and I'm very proud of them. Um, but of course, um, these, you know, best laid plans, we only have control over one end of the uh, equipment that's sending out the signal. So it uh, isn't working, uh, isn't working for all students, but um, staff have been very creative. And again, I'm very proud of them and coming up with creative ways. And this includes a lot of our ed techs who've gone above and beyond to try to meet student needs, whether it's uh, pulling together packets and dropping them off in mailboxes. Uh, they've, uh, they've worked very hard to ensure that everyone is receiving some benefit from uh, this time that we're using a distant learning format. Um, transition work is well on the way. Um, at all schools, we had the CDS transition meeting, CDS being Child Development Services, uh, the uh, preschool equivalent to special education. Uh, we had those meetings at Pond Cove. Um, Jason and Sarah were very helpful and attended uh, all of them as well. Um, and the Pond Cove team were wonderful. And we, did, of course, did this all remotely. And um, this is the first time for that, but it worked out pretty well. And uh, uh, again, very proud of the staff for that. Um, middle school and Pond Cove are working and communicating, collaborating with regard to students that are, uh, are rising fifth graders that are going into fifth grade. Uh, as you know, uh, I can imagine there's a lot of anxiety there, particularly the way uh, this school year is ending and the fact that on any, any year, it's a, it's a big transition and can be a very anxiety producing one. And then we have our eighth graders moving up to high school. Um, and again, the middle school staff and the high school staff are working collaborative, collaboratively to try to come up with creative ways to do what we would normally be doing in person. Um, and they've done a very good job. And uh, then we have our high school seniors, of course, uh, that we are um, transitioning into uh, their adult, <laughs> adulthood 
And uh, the staff has been working extremely hard and intensively on ensuring that they're all, they all have what they need to, uh, to uh, get their diplomas. And um, normally I'll let you know how many students we're servicing. We're currently servicing 169 students in special education. Any questions? Thank you. I don't see any. Okay. Um, it looks like Kimberly has a question. Thank you. Sorry. Um, Kimberly, that's, yeah. sorry about that. That's okay. Um, um, thank you so much. It sounds like, uh, like, uh, hard, hard work is being done and I totally appreciate that. Um, I just wondered, um, I believe that there's often, um, a summer program for some of the students, maybe in special ed. I, I may have that wrong, um, but wondered if that is the case, if they're, how that's being handled this year. So um, that's a great question, Kim, and you are correct. There's extended school year services that are provided for students who have a documented regression and an extensive recoupment time for specific skills. Um, at this moment in time, DOE is um, not supporting in-person instruction for this summer. Uh, that could change. Um, I will be communicating with families uh, this week, as a matter of fact, to let them know what we will be able to offer and uh, basically checking in with those folks to see if they're interested in that. I mean, so obviously we would have to uh, follow similar to what we're following now with the distant learning plans and it would be remote uh, support. So um, yeah, that's a great question. And, but at this time, um, that's, where D, that's what DOE stance is. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Now I think you're up, Kathy. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, first, I will mention that that exam Jeff was referencing, and I only know this because I looked it up while he was speaking, is the assessment of performance toward proficiency in languages, better known as the APPLE. Um, so I have updates in three areas. The first is placement. Uh, I wanted to let everyone know, if I haven't already done so, that the GT screening and identification that would normally take place in the spring is being postponed until next fall for obvious reasons. Um, but that the GT teacher, uh, Mike Jim Petruzzi, is hoping to meet remotely with the student, with the parents of the students who are already identified to collaborate on an individualized learning plan for next year. And similarly, the um, English language, uh, English learner teachers, our EL teachers, are going to be meeting with the parents of our English learners to review the annual WIDA access scores, which we just received. Um, and they'll be using those scores and the performance of the students over the course of the year to inform um, updates to their individual, individualized language acquisition plans. Uh, the second area I wanted to provide an update in is curriculum and professional development. I've been meeting with and will continue to meet with um, teachers in grades kindergarten through eight by grade level and course to hear what their knowledge skill expectations of students have been during this period of remote learning. So what they've had to let go of and what they've emphasized, because we've really, and we've asked them to focus on essential knowledge and skills. Um, the ways in which and the degree to which the students have been engaging in the remote learning. Um, the differentiation, this to your point in question, uh, so the degree to which students, uh, uh, sorry, the different differentiation and support that they anticipate students will need. And then what professional development would be helpful as they start to think about the opening, reopening of school. And um, I'm also planning to survey teachers um, electronically, and that information will inform our district, district-wide and school-based planning. And finally, in the area of evaluation, um, at the March business meeting, I shared with you that hot off the press that the um, evaluation committee had that very day 
um, approve the, the final revisions to our performance evaluation and professional growth plan. And six days later, we were in a period of remote learning, which obviously affected the ability to carry out the, um, the full evaluation process. Um, and so the administrators worked together to come up with some changes that they would that they thought would um, be appropriate um, under the circumstances. And the evaluation committee met today and approved those changes um, for this year only. Um, but again, given given the unusual circumstances in which we're all working, um, and the most significant change is that our continuing contract educators will be frozen in their current cohort. So they will stay in the cohort that they're in, so at the stage of the cycle that they're in for one more year. Um, and that will give them the time they need to prepare for their summative evaluation. I'm thinking here now about this, the, the educators who are in the third year and so would be having their, their summative evaluation conference would have had. Now they'll get to have it next year, gives them more time to prepare. Um, and it also means that those conferences, which are so critical, can take place in person instead of over our beloved Zoom. So that's my my report for the for the for the month. Any questions? Thank you for that. Any more acronyms you want me to define for you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Marcy, our business manager. Great, thanks, Heather. And I think I'm going to be able to share my screen here to start showing you some lovely charts. And we can start with um, the one that you all are familiar with for every month. So here we are, 83% of the year is our normal spending percentage amount right now and we are at 79%. So the percentage spread from last month was about, it was three percentage points. So we're um, a little bit above that this month. And last year at this time, we were at 78% um, 70, no, spent last year. As you can see here, we've, uh, we've fulfilled our debt service obligations for the year. So we're all finished with that. And um, Don and I have been working on going through some projections to start um, giving you all an idea. And Elizabeth, um, I know that we have mentioned before, I don't want to say that I am an expert here at projections for the end of the year. We definitely will leave that for our auditor, but I want to be able to give you all a sense of where we are right now with um, some of the news that we got in last month from our town finance director with the um, unexpected surplus of revenue. So I wanted to kind of give you an, an overall view. And can you guys see my chart okay here? It says projections for June 30th. No? Yeah. Okay, so these are just projections right now to give you an idea of how we're um, saving money from um, the situation and how we're not saving money. So we had our revenues that came in. We had this great um, little amount, this surplus is 300,000. And we had the additional money that we got for the out of district students from the state that will be in our June subsidy check from the state. And we had a sale of a school bus that was unexpected. Then we had a shortfall in our audited fund balance that we weren't expecting and a short balance of our local revenue based on um, our situation. So our overall for revenue will be a surplus of 284,000. Okay, so we move down to the expenditures and our biggest place of, of having some help here with, our, with the um, online distance learning is the savings for substitutes. So you can see we're going to have a savings there. We're projected of 104,000. That's going to help us out tremendously. Moving down, we're going to have some savings from our transportation. And another nice little chunk with our spring athletics not being in place. And a little bit that because we were under budget for CIP, I'm not really um, 
holding on to that number too tightly because if anything happens between now and the end of the school year in our maintenance expenses, that's where it will come from right there. So our contingency account, nice um, little untouched spot there. And then, oh, I'm sorry, this is, no, sorry, this. You guys won't like the number I'm putting in there. <laughs> again, I did it again. Okay, so um, let's just talk about that for a second because I don't want you to be alarmed and I know this is like uh, totally not fun right now, but I just want you to know that in our surrounding areas, the schools around us are having three times this much of a problem for their deficit in one of our uh, schools that normally has a completely break-even operation with their nutrition services. And the, I know the, I'm learning this every day and I just learned this news about nutrition services in two of our surrounding schools that normally have a break-even operation from our um, daily finance meetings with the state. So we're not alone in this, but um, I know that doesn't bring a whole lot of comfort right now, but the good news is that down below, and, and I've been also working with our auditor and Jen Con, uh, Jennifer, who is going to be working with us closely this summer when we do our year end closing, this contingency account right here is probably what we're going to be using to take care of that deficit. So that's, I mean, as you can see, that's what part of this net amount comes to down below. So we're um, working closely with our auditor and to make sure that this is um, taken care of by the end of the school year. And then that leaves us with that total there, the total surplus right there. And then we are, we've committed our $400,000 for next year, which will most likely at this point give us, if everything goes well and um, everything goes, fine and smoothly, we're going to have that going into the following fiscal year. So, um, Marcy, is that the amount that we can, that we will begin to grow our fund balance back up with? Correct. That's right, Elizabeth. Okay. And, and, you know, you and I, we've said, I don't want to um, say that I'm an expert at the fund balance projection. I will be in a year. I promise you we'll get better at this. But for now, this is really pretty this is pretty good. Um, and I've talked to Jen several times about, about all of this and I feel pretty good about it. And when she puts her eyes on it this summer, we'll be looking pretty good too. So, but yes, that is correct, Elizabeth. That's what we can be planning for, for our future to start um, having that as something to go towards the following fiscal year. Um, all right, any other questions about that, you guys? And Again, um, we're not alone in, um, in this based on everything that I'm hearing every day. And the other thing I wanna tell you about too is that, um, I don't have to screen share anymore. I can take it off screen share if I can figure that out. Um, Donna and I have been talking daily about our plans with our CARES Act money that we have at the state coming our way. And Kathy and Donna and I are watching daily for when the applications are open. And I'm in touch with our state finance team meeting so that we know exactly when the applications come open. And they have, um, it's not yet because the state is still trying to determine their allocations that they're willing to actually put in writing in state for each school district, uh, for each SAU, I should say. So that will be coming. And then Donna and I are embarking into the world of FEMA grant money too. That's a unchartered territory. So uh, we just started that process today and we're researching and it's gonna probably be quite the process, but if we keep digging and get there first, I'm hoping we can get something to help relieve. Um, specifically right now I'm targeting for the nutrition services part. I think I see a hand up under Kimberly. Thank you, Marcy. Could you just refresh my memory? You mentioned that there was um, 
additional money from the out of district students and, and maybe more than we had anticipated getting? Yes, that was this, um, I can get back up there. I don't know what my, oh, here we go. That's that money right there. That's that amount. That's what we got for our additional out of district students that we weren't expecting. So that was a nice little surprise that we got. Oh, sorry. And was there um, any any reason why why we got it? It just um, oh, did, did we were the first. Or? Yes, we jumped in there first, Kimberly. We um we I found out about it in a meeting, and before I even got home, Jen um, in Donna Superintendent Wolfram's office already had the data for us. So we were one of the first to submit the request. That was kind of a first come first serve money situation. And it was um, Marcy, has the state offered this before. It has been from what I understand from that meeting uh, when Tyler announced it, they had not offered that before. Um, and, it, and if they had, it had been quite a while because that's what I remember him saying um, during the meeting. And that's what made my ears, ears perk up and uh, got on the phone immediately so that we could uh, get take advantage of that. Excellent. Thank you so much. And, uh, and thanks for, for being on top of this. It seems like uh, each meeting you have some new thing that you have uh, sought out and, uh, and worked hard to, to obtain for us. So thank you very much. We're hoping. Thanks, Kimberly. And I just now hope I can stop my screen share. So <laughs> now, oh, here we go. I found it. No worries. Okay. Donna, Donna's much better at, at this. Oh, I just have a question. Yes. Yeah, Mars, a great uh, presentation, good numbers. Just for me and for others, we noticed that the nutrition service is in the negative, and we know that our cafes are closed. So how does that become negative? If you can explain the logic behind that, please. Yes, so as soon as we, were, we stopped having our food services, um, it operation within our schools. We lost our income from our lunch, the lunch money from students, as well as our state subsidy uh, for the regular amount of lunches provided. Uh, we are still applying for the state subsidy at this time, but we lost our normal lunch uh, a la carte revenue. Um, I want to also share on um, that. So it is it's a hit. Right now, that's our, it's definitely, and like I said, every other nutrition service department is going to do that. That's why I feel like if um, we get out there and get Marcy, we're having a hard time course. hearing you. Yeah. Oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Okay. Go, um, go so, back to the sentences. Okay. <laughs> um, let me think. Um, yes. Yeah, so when we lost our revenue from all of the daily sales, that's where we started to, in one month, we uh, went into quite a bit of the red of about 40,000 right now is what it is. And we have high costs for food and for, um, and it's like a thing that everybody else isn't facing. So the trick now will be to find some sources to get some help with first. So that's, I think, because everybody's in need and, and everybody's going to be trying to figure this out across the board in, in our state and the country. So um, I think that we've been fortunate that this is just a, a bump in the road right now that we have to face, but we can, we can do it. I know with some hard work. There was another thing I wanted to add about that. Um, yes, I know I would to tell you some good news because I always feel like I'm a doomsday person with the, with the numbers sometimes. The good news is that um, we have a spreadsheet and we have um, giving notes to all of the wonderful people who have been giving donations to the Nutrition Services Depart uh, Program for the Backpack Program. And I wanted to tell you all that it is just um, lovely to see, and I, if I can give a shout out right now publicly. So um, the it's just been great that we've made so many donations and people are donating some of what they normally would have given for their children to eat 
and they've been giving it to the backpack program. So I think it's, that's just wonderful. Great, thank you. I think Heather can introduce you to Justin Alfon, who once came to our board and uh, he's dedicating full time towards his nonprofit, which helps with schools and their lunches. So that's a conversation we can have with Heather. Yeah, I think we've already connected with Full Plates Full Potential in this period and they've already given us a donation. Am I correct about that? that is That's correct. the program that, that Nasser is referring to. Yeah. Yeah, I believe we got, we got two grants from them already. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. It's a great organization, so. Well, I appreciate our district's commitment to feeding students and families who are in need even you know when it's it's kind of difficult for us that we still want to take care of our children i agree elizabeth i think it's a wonderful thing and it's a wonderful thing how the community has kind of rallied around with you all doing that mm -hmm. uh, marcy thank you for that and i agree with kimberly i think the projections of where we're headed and though you're no expert that seemed pretty easy to follow and Pretty right on, it sounds like, you know, understandable and mm -hmm. a fair projection. So thank you for that. That yes. gives us a little bit to work with and keep in mind, for sure. More knowledge. Um, okay, Donna, I think you're up next, superintendent. Okay, so the administrative team has been working together and very hard um, individually with teams back in our schools. Um, to develop a schedule for the end of the 2019-2020 school year. And you did receive a copy of it. It's a, it's a colorful chart with some dates and some activities of what, what we plan to happen at those points. Uh, we started by um, um, about um, probably a month and a half ago, brainstorming what were the needs of students, what were the needs of teachers, and what were the needs of the district as a whole. Um, some things that came up about uh, for students, needs of some students were um, time to, there might be some students who need some extra time to complete assignments. Um, they needed time to clean out their lockers. They needed to turn in, uh, time to turn in equipment. Uh, there might be uh, some that need a little additional support. Um, needs of the teachers included um, the need to organize their rooms for their summer cleaning. Normally, they would be starting to do that slowly, a little bit at a time, and of course, they haven't been, in, been able to get in their rooms. Um, they um, need to develop class lists for next year, need to collect assignments, uh, have closure with their students, and to begin planning uh, with their teammates for next year. Um, and district new, uh, needs that we identified incl include collecting devices because we have all those devices out in the, in the uh, community, um, other equipment, books, instruments, school materials. Um, so it's important as we started talking about how to meet these needs um, in the safest way possible, thinking about social distancing, thinking about wearing masks, thinking about um, time for sanitization. So um, we have developed a schedule um, at, at, as, the, um, as the girls were, were talking, uh, it identifies May 22nd as the last instruction day for student, for seniors, uh, with the 26th to the 29th as uh, the week to work on resilience projects. And then May 29th, uh, hopefully, if the weather holds, um, the seniors will return the materials and empty lockers um, according to their scheduled times, um, return their devices. Then June 5th would be the last day of instruction for K-11 regular education students with the week of the 8th through the 12th for students to complete and turn in assignments. Um, if there's any, if students still need a little extra time with um, assignments. Uh, special education students would continue with uh, the support that uh, on the schedule that they're doing now through June 12th. And then June 12th would be the last day uh, for all uh, remote learning support. 
then some teachers would be scheduled to work in their rooms um, that week uh, and work with each other remotely. And students would start to return their devices and materials and we've been working on ways to do that. Uh, Noel was going to get some large boxes uh, so that uh, students could bring computers and leave them in the boxes and then they would sit in the boxes for a couple days um, to quarantine and then the, um, our tech people would start working on them um, and students would come into uh, the schools according to a schedule to clean out their lockers and get their materials. And then teachers would use the week of June 15th to 18th uh, to complete their rooms for summer clearing, finalize their teamwork um, as they plan for next year. And students who have not returned materials and devices would be scheduled to do so that week. Um, the principals are sending out, uh, I'll be sending out a letter explaining all of this and the principals will be sending out a letter um, tomorrow, probably the next day um, to explain how, how things are gonna work in their schools and their schedules. And they've also started working with their teachers on um, scheduling. It is a, it is a scheduling, uh, I wanna say nightmare, trying to figure out how to get, uh, Troy talked a little bit about it, um, all, all of the teachers into the schools at different times so that there's not more than, um, you think 10 people, but then you think if there's, um, there uh, will be some, um, some of the administrative assistants will be working from home, some will be working in the office, so we have to count those people. Um, at the middle school, we have people coming in to, um, parents coming in to pick up food. Uh, so we have to work around that and um, trying to make sure that we don't have teachers there when people are coming to pick up food and because of, what, for one thing, numbers and another thing, confidentiality. So um, it's, it's a, a lot to orchestrate for the principals and they have started working on it and we'll get those schedules out to people um, so that we can have um, a safe, safe situation for everyone. Um, we've been working really hard to make sure that um, we comply with the CDC recommendations, wearing masks. Uh, Perry's on board. He's having his, um, his team work uh, a later shifts uh, for those few weeks so that they won't be in the building. Uh, there will be one custodian in every building, but um, the teams won't be in the buildings when um, the teachers are in the building. So we have to think about those 10 people in the building. Um, so there are lots of, lots of planning things going on now and I think we're, I think we're doing great. The principals um, and, and Dell, uh, Perry, and Peter have, have done a great job working all together to pull this off. Um, so we're still waiting, as Marcy said, for work on submitting our CARES application. Um, we are in the process of identifying areas um, that we'll, we'll address in our application, thinking about school nutrition, sanitization materials, uh, nursing equipment. The nurses um, just gave us a huge list of what they will need to keep students safe as we come back to school next year. And um, the CARES uh, money can uh, be put towards things that we have already bought, um, to deal with this crisis and things that we will need in the future. Um, also some, possibly some remediation um, materials that will be needed next year. Uh, so we're, we're just waiting from the state um, to hear when the application uh, can, be, can be processed. So uh, they keep, we've been waiting for two, two or three weeks now, so. Uh, Cumberland County superintendents continue to meet remotely once a week to discuss issues that we're facing. And usually we have um, at least one representative from Maine School Superintendents Association with us. And we've had um, the uh, Commissioner of Education, Pender Macon, has also joined us a few times. Um, so it's great to have her there um, so we can, we can talk to her and ask her questions. And of course, the latest topic that we're all uh, discussing is um, the reopening of school and the many different options that we might be looking at um, about that. Uh, there was just recently a, a, a film released from a school in China and uh, talked about how they are reopening and it's mind boggling. Um, our administrators have been discussing uh, school reopening and um, as soon as we get 
finished with our planning for the uh, for the closing, we'll we'll be working on the re the uh, reopening, studying very op uh, various options, and um, a team will probably develop a framework for the different options and then over the summer a larger team comprised of probably starting in june uh, possibly uh, two teachers from each building um, the director of teaching and learning kathy uh, possibly two board members to the school nurses the director of technology director of facilities and transportation school psychologist um, peter the director of food services the principals and uh, a representative from administrative assistance um, will be meeting in various combinations to address and come up with the details for um, the various plans. We know that um, it could happen in lots of different ways. So we have to be planning for all of those different ways uh, so that we're, that we're ready for whatever hits in the fall. So we will be continuing to meet throughout the summer um, to do the planning on this. So it's a huge undertaking, but we'll get there. So any questions? I've got a question for you, Donna. I, I know that um, planning is very difficult, but the words are on the street is that if this pandemic peaks again, is it going to peak again in the fall? And that's when the school starts. So are we expecting for the worst uh, as well, or planning for the worst? Well, that will be one of the options that we plan for, Nasser, yes. I just wanted to thank you, Donna, and all the administrators for all this work and these plans. And I know that it's sort of like you make plans and then, um, then you know, nature laughs. But I still appreciate all the hard work that goes into this. And um, I thank you for, I know that you all are doing a lot of extra work. I know that it's, it's a very difficult time. And so um, I'm hearing really great things from people in the community and I wanted to share that with you and with administrators and just say thank you. Thank you. Um, so the end of the year plan will require um, a change in the calendar that you'll be voting on um, in a little bit. So. Okay. Any other comments? Um, Elizabeth, thank you for that comment. I think we all feel that way. Appreciate all the extra work that all of you are doing that um, is above and beyond anything we ever expected, <laughs> for sure. Uh, okay, so now we're on to new business. Um, may I have a move, movement for item 9A, please? I move we approve the collecting of the collective bargaining agreement for the teachers union for 2020 through 2023. And may I have a second? I second, second that. Nasser. All right. I got Nasser Shear seconding that. I heard somebody oh. else. I wasn't sure who that was. So um, are there any questions or comments? I'd just like to, um, I see some people are here um, that are in that teachers group and I would like to thank everybody that participated in negotiations for what I felt like were very respectful, productive and um, sensitive negotiations. And I'd like to get a, give a very extra special thank you to Hope Straw and Phil Saucier, who were my um, cohorts on that negotiations team. Absolutely could not have um, done that without both of you. But again, I feel like we are so lucky here in Cape Elizabeth to, to meet, to speak respectfully. We don't necessarily all come at a problem the same way, but I feel like we have the same goals which is really wonderful. So thank you. I see um, Wynn here, but also Mark um, Ash did a lot of work. And um, so thank you to everybody who worked on this. I feel like we came to a sensitive and appropriate outcome. Uh, 
Thank you for sharing that, Elizabeth. Um, I think that goes a long way. So appreciate those words. Any other comments? All right, and then the vote. So Heather Altmerg is yay. Kimberly Carr, yay. Philip Saucier, yay. Elizabeth Seyfries, yay. Nasser Shear, yay. Hope Straw, yay. And Laura Danino, yay. Well, congratulations to all. That is wonderful that that got passed. Thank you for all the hard work on all fronts. Um, may I have um, a motion, please, for item 9B? I move we approve the superintendent's nominations of personnel to second year probationary contracts as described in our agenda. Second. Any comments? Okay. I'm wondering, Donna, if you can just comment um, for the public secondary second year probationary contracts, if you can just explain that a little bit. Okay, these are um, the general work. The, these are teachers who were hired, they've completed or almost completed their first year. Um, by law, we have to let probationary teachers know by um, May 14th, they have a contract for um, next year. And they are on um, one year contracts at this point. So these are um, teachers who have, will have completed their first year at the end. So they'll be next year, um, this year, their first year probation, next year that they would be moving to second year uh, probationary contracts. And um, they would then move the next year to a third year probationary contract. frozen for me. Okay. Kimberly, can you maybe say that again? It froze on me. Oh, she's muted. Kimberly, you're muted. You're muted. <coughs> Sorry, what do you want me to say? Uh, are you a yay or a nay? Oh, I'm a yay. Sorry, I, I didn't hear anything. Yes, I'm a yay. There we go. It was the glitch. I couldn't hear you. Now I can. Uh, Phil Saucier. Yay. Ann Elizabeth Seyfries. Yay. Nasser Shear. Yay. Hope Straw. Yay. Laura Danino. Yay. Next is item 9C. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the superintendent's nomination of personnel to third year probationary contracts as defined in our agenda. May I have a second, second. please? Thank you. Any discussion? So I think Donna just explained the different probationary years. Uh, so now this is the third year. Um, are there any other questions or comments about this? Okay, seeing none, we'll vote. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Heather, could I just ask, could I ask one question first? Sorry. Yes. Um, was this, um, is it the current third year probationary people that, um, that I think Donna had a dinner, but maybe Kathy, <laughs> sorry, um, that it was being postponed until next year, um, like that they were going to have another probationary year. Is that what I understood, Kath? I think it was Kathy said to say. Uh, no, it's, it's, no. The, uh, it's the teachers who are on a continuing contract. Got it, got it, got it. Who 
whose evaluation is being, whose who's placement, because it's a three-year continuing contract uh, educator cycle. And so they're, whether they're in year one, year two, or year three of that continuing contract evaluate, evaluation cycle is being frozen. Excellent. Thank you. I had it completely wrong. I'm glad I asked. <laughs> Thank you. That's really good clarity, though. Um, okay, any other comments? I see none. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Nasser Shear. Yay. Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Okay. Moving on, we have item 9D. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the superintendent's nomination of personnel to first year continuing contract. I have a second. Second. I second that. Okay. Um, Donna, can you just give a quick explanation? This is a little different. It's a continuing contract, but. So these are the teachers that um, will have completed their third uh, probationary year and they, they, um, they, they get three years. Um, they go through three years of, of probation before they're put on continuing contract. Uh, so these are the teachers that have completed their third year, their third probationary year, and they will, they will be put on continuing contract. Okay, any other questions or comments about that? Thank you. Elizabeth. Um, this is kind of a big deal and I wanted to just kind of draw a line under it a little bit to <laughs> congratulate all of these teachers. They have gone through three probationary years in Cape Elizabeth. This doesn't mean that they're brand new to teaching. They may be veteran teachers that took jobs in Cape Elizabeth and went through this probationary process that we have here. And um, so I wanna just say, you know, thank you and welcome them to, you know, sort of the more permanent family and that we're so happy to have them here. And it's a really big deal to be offered your continuing contract. So congratulations. Anything else? All right, seeing none, the vote. Heather Altberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Bill Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Nasser Shear. Yay. Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Okay, item 9E, please. May I have a motion? I move that we approve administrators' contracts through June 30th, 2021. May I have a second? Second. Any comments or questions? Maybe Donna, you can talk about this. Uh, so these administrators, um, our administrators are, uh, these are more um, district administrators um, and they have typic typically been on one year contracts. I actually would like to have a discussion about that for next year, but that's, um, that's a different discussion than tonight. Um, so uh, typically uh, these, the people in these positions have been on one year contracts, so. So we're just asking to continue the contract as is. Correct. Any other comments or concerns, questions? Okay, seeing none. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Um, Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. 
Yay. Elizabeth Seyfries. Yay. Nasser Shear. Yay. Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Great. Being that Marsha Weeks is here, congratulations. <laughs> That's great. Um, as well to Perry and Peter. Um, we're super glad that this is continuing. Uh, item, is it 9, 9F? May I have a motion, please? I move we approve administrators' contracts through June 30th, 2020. I'm actually going to read their names out, mostly in gratitude. Um, Nate Carpenter, the assistant principal at the high school. Troy Eastman, principal at the middle school. Sarah Forey Pettit, assistant principal at Pong Cove. Noel Haroff, our technology coordinator. Jason Mangerides, princ yeah, principal at Pong Cove. Kyle Mori, assistant principal at the middle school. Del Peavy, director of special services. Jeff Shedd, principal at the high school. Kathy Stankard, Director of Teaching and Learning, and Jeff Thorak, Athletic Administrator. May I have a second? Second. Any comments or questions? So Donna, is this a similar situation, just broken out from the business yeah. part? These contracts um, get extended every year, one year out, so they're always two years out. <laughs> so, okay, great. Any other comments? Okay, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr, yay. Bill Saucier, yay. Nasser Shear. Oh, sorry, I, I skipped Elizabeth. Yep. My apologies. Elizabeth Seyfries. Yay. Okay, so, uh, Nasser Shear, I think I heard you. Yes? Yes. Thank you, Nasser. Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Okay, can I have a motion for 9G, please? I move we approve the calendar change proposal for end of year 2020. And may I have a second? Second. I second that. Okay, Donna, can you speak to this a little bit more? Well, this is the, this is the uh, proposal that I explained in my report. Um, and it, you also uh, got a chart with all the different dates on it and um, a copy of the, uh, the letter that will go out to the community tomorrow explaining, further explaining um, the chart. So yeah. it does so the, calendar change. Well, will the chart yeah. also go out to people? Because I feel yes. like the chart is really useful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I don't have the chart up right in front of me right now. I could pull it right up. Uh, was the end of the day, end of the year, K through 11 on the 4th of June? Was that the final date or the 5th? 5th. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We included that. Um, we know that Fridays are the days that teachers um, touch base and so thought that the, it was important to include that day in, um, yeah. in that week so that they could touch base, say goodbye, um, clo yeah. closure. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay, any other comments or questions? Uh, I'd like to say thanks for all the work in, in being creative and figuring it out. Um, the nightmare of these details, as you said, of trying to come to the end of the year this year, it, it looks like it's very well thought out and carefully done. So, and I just Heather Altberg is a yay. Yeah. That's great. Thank you for that, Donna. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seyfries. 
Yay. Yeah. Nasser Shear. Yay. Yeah. Hope Straw. Yay. Yeah. And Laura Danino. Yay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and we have the last motion, item 9H. May I have a motion? I move we consider to approve policy um, uh, for a second reading and a vote uh, IKF which is our graduation requirements policy. Thank you. May I have a second? I second that. Okay. Yeah, uh, I second Hope, that. Would you like to speak to it? Okay. Sure. Um, so what we've done is this is with the guidance of um, Kathy and Donna. We've updated this and input from Jeff, of course. Um, we've removed sort of a, um, uh, the language regarding uh, the transition period to proficiency-based education, uh, meeting the requirements for proficiency-based education. Um, so the policy had some sort of outdated pieces where it talked about the various years and the requirements during that transition period. So uh, it was cleaned up to just simply state the graduation requirements, which will be applicable as of 2021 graduates uh, and onward until there's some future change. Um, it stay, we kept the same, it has the same um, credit requirements, it has the same credits per, per um, um, course type. Um, other changes are um, sort of some cleanup language around um, um, the various treatment for transfer students, homeschooled students. We clarified um, they be they they're required to attend the school for their senior their entire senior year to qualify for a diploma. Um, and that's pretty much it. Does anyone have any other questions on it, on the changes or updates? Kathy, did you have, does anything I missed that I want to mention? From our last meeting, we added, I mean, from the, from the last time the school board met, we added in the recommended language around early awarding of diplomas. I think, are you seeing that in blue on your copy? Yes, yes. So, yes, so we have a clause that is new, right, that says early awarding of diplomas, students who have met our district's graduation requirements in fewer than four years may be awarded a diploma with the approval of the principal. And what what was the I mean, is that something we've been we did already, or was it something we wanted to address? That was a question. I don't recall the specific origin. My understanding is just two days. Yeah. This, yeah. Uh, this so this predates my time, but and Jeff, we need your institutional memory here. But my understanding is that that this language used to be in the graduation policy prior to the adoption of the graduation policy that implemented proficiency-based education. But the parameters, the statute, were such that you couldn't graduate early because you were required to be uh, you were required to have a learning experience in certain content areas in each year of high school. So this language was removed, but now that we are no longer implementing proficiency-based education in accordance with that statute, because that statute was repealed, um, we've reinserted the language. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good summary, Kathy, that's right. I mean, there's been an opportunity for kids in, for years. There's only one or two every year, or 
every other year. So it's not a frequent thing, but there is a process in place to allow students to graduate early um, if they accelerate their course completion during their high school years. So that's, it's really not new. Anything else, Hope? Um, that's it, I think. Okay. Any other comments for, or questions from the board? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and vote. Heather Altenberg, yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Bill Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Nasser Shear. Yay. Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Okay. So item nine, I it, there's no vote required, but Hope, can you speak to us about the first policy reading JS? Sure. Um, JS is Suicide Prevention Intervention and Response, and this is a, it's required by statute um, that all the districts in Maine have a policy. Um, that what this sets out is our requirement to provide training to all staff members within the first six months of hire, and then have an annual refresher. Um, it also covers our requirement to have um, grade level appropriate instruction for students around suicide awareness uh, and also have um, policies and protocols in place. I'm sorry, not policies, um, protocols in place um, around um, counseling um, and intervention in the event there is uh, an event. And what we're looking at here is the is pretty much a st of the standard format of the policy. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I have a comment about the policy that the that we brought forward at our last meeting that we really um, did sort of just to raise the flag and it was around the um, physical exams, especially around athletics. Um, the MPA has released guidance recently just within the last week around physicals. And I think that, you know, the, the lead that we were taking by kind of raising awareness around that policy, but then not planning to vote on it and implement it was actually a really good idea because the MPA is not requiring physicals for students who have had physicals to play um, athletics uh, before because there's a strong likelihood that it'd be difficult for students to get in and get those physicals. So um, I think we may even have to further delay as we go into the fall because I think it's going to be difficult for students to be seen for those kind of well visits. Hope, is that policy still being discussed? And So that was um, the policy that Elizabeth is referencing is we wanted to raise it at the last meeting just to create awareness for families that, that it will be changing in the fall. But we sort of intentionally skipped this meeting as, at, for any discussion on it because we don't want to implement the changes until the fall. Okay. Um, so it was more of a heads up to the community about okay. what our requirements will be for athletes and, and doctors uh, approvals. Is it? Okay, great. So any other questions about um, first policy reading of JS? No. Um, item J, notification of retiree. Um, Stephanie Babin, apparently, and Ed Tech is retiring. Congratulations to her for hitting that milestone. And next up, 
is item 10. School board agenda requests. Are there any requests? Seeing none, committee reports, policy, Hope, is there anything more to share? Uh, yes, I would note that we, um, we also, did, we did not bring back um, ACAA at this time, um, as we, we had discussed it, and we were currently in the process of refining this concept of confidential employees and we're still not there yet. Um, so we're doing some work on that and it will be discussed at the next meeting. Um, we'll, be, we'll be discussing JS, the suicide prevention policy, as well as this concept of confidential employee um, with the hope of bringing that back to, at the next regular business meeting for review. And that's it. And the next policy meeting is um, Thank you. May 26th at 3 o'clock. May 26th. Yep. Okay. Uh, technology committee? I don't know if that's been meeting. So I know PAS has not. Student wellness. No, not a... uh, buildings and grounds. Okay. Buildings and grounds is still on hold. Legislative liaison. Um, and so the only meeting that I have down here is the policy uh, committee meeting that Hope just mentioned on Tuesday, May 26 um, at three o'clock via Zoom. Um, are there any other meetings that I'm not mentioning here? So then we have a final motion. I have a motion, please. I move, we adjourn. Thank you, Laura. Second. Second. I second that. Any discussion? Okay, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Bill Saucier. <laughs> yay. Elizabeth Seyfries. Yay. Nasser Shear. Yay. <laughs> Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thanks, you. Yeah, my... Bye. Thank you. Thank you. I can eat now. I can bake my fast. That's what I was so excited.